We got Tony Martin back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Ryan LaFleur at UFC 229 on October 6th. Tony, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me back. Of course, man. It's always uh, good catching up with you. And uh, you've been a busy guy, man. I've been following you on social media. You've been doing a lot of traveling. I know your uh, girlfriend, Kayla Harrison, has been uh, fighting for PFL. And I know you've had some teammates on the PFL cards as well. Um, how has that been in terms of getting training and traveling so much? I mean, yeah, the traveling's tough a little bit. But, you know, obviously I was – we have other coaches that are going to those events. So I'm, I'm able to train throughout the fight week of all those PFL fights that I'm going to. But – uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of traveling, but I I'm getting ready. I, I feel really good right now. Well, and I was going to say, too, you get a, you know different looks as well, too, when you go and train in uh, different spots and uh, when you're moving around. So that's uh, never a bad thing, which is uh, good. And, uh, of course, you're fighting at welterweight now. We saw your debut a few months ago, and uh, you get that win over uh, Kaede Nakamura. I know you would have liked to finish in that fight, but you must have been pretty happy with that performance. Yeah, I mean, I was. I definitely always want the finish, and I felt like I heard him a few times where uh, – but – you know, it's one of those fights where, you know, I dominated all three rounds and it's another southpaw. So I'm fighting another southpaw. So that fight, you know, just leading into this fight. So it kind of worked out really well. Uh, but no, I was happy with it, but I always want to finish. How'd you feel competing at welterweight? Oh, I feel really nice. It, it's, it's really nice just not having to focus on every single thing that you're eating and focus on training. I'm focusing on the fight. I'm not, you know, focusing on 100% on just what what you're putting in your body at certain times, it's just a big stress relief overall. You're taking on Ryan LaFleur, and this is obviously a huge fight, but first off, you must be pretty stoked that uh, you're on UFC 229, uh, Habib and uh, Conor McGregor. This is a big deal, man. Yeah, I mean, it's a big card, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I've said it a few times now that I never I never started fighting to, to fight on other people's cards, you know. I, I, I fight to try to lead my own cards, try to, fight for a world title someday and that and that's my only my goal but obviously i got to use this platform that i'm going to have there's going to be a lot more viewers at this uh watching this fight so ideally i go out there and have another dominant performance and, and try to gain a lot more fans and you got a pretty notable guy in ryan lafleur he's got that 14 and 2 record how do you feel like you match up against him yeah ryan's tough you know he's one of those guys that uh seven and two in the ufc but i think i'm I have, i'm dangerous everywhere i think i think that i have an ability to finish fights in so many different ways and, and he's proven he has no he has no finish ability you know he's had he's, all his fights are won by decision and uh he doesn't really go for submissions he's not looking for knockouts he's looking to he's looking to win a decision that's it that's his only outlook is to win a decision i'm looking to try to finish this fight uh i think that stylistically it's an interesting matchup but uh where he plays a very safe game i think where He's not taking a lot of chances to, to run into stuff. And so I got to be on my A game. I got to make him work for everything. And I got to try to stay on him and keep him working the whole fight. And I, I'm going to be looking to finish. I think that he's going to try to take me down. That's that's what my thought process is. And um, I'm going to look to sprawl, shoot, you know, whatever. Whatever whatever I got to do to win. But I think he's going to try to take me down. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop, stop his takedowns. If not, I'm going to submit him. Um, but I'm looking for a knockout. Obviously, he's known for his wrestling. Do you, uh, you know, for this training camp, do you try and work with more wrestlers just to, you know, work on the takedown defense and everything else? Or is it just uh, business as usual for this fight? No, I, I mean, we have the best South Paul wrestlers in the world at ATT. You know, I, I'm training a lot with Colby Covington. You can't find a better partner leading into this fight where you get a guy with Colby that he has better wrestling, better cardio, and just overall better. Like, obviously, you know, he's the interim champ. He has freaky cardio and he could wrestle like crazy so i'm just like i'm gonna get in there and do as many rounds as possible with him try to get after him and that's what we've been doing you know he's been coming in and helping me a lot so i i feel uh there, there's just no way fight night's gonna come and i'm just gonna be like this is gonna feel easy compared to what i'm, I'm putting myself through with training with obviously kobe and then i got uh glyson tebow I'm, I'm sparring with as well he's you know one of the best south paul wrestlers in the world as well um I've been working a little bit with Dustin Poirier too. Just start, I'm trying to get as many Southpaw looks as possible. I, he's come out and he's had different styles. A few fights where you know he fought Mike Pearson, he just struck the whole fight. So I, I'm gonna be prepared everywhere, and I also want to get better, just not in one area. And I'm not trying to just get better to beat him. I'm trying to get better to to be the best fighter ever. You know, I, I want to fight for a title someday, and I think this is a great next fight in my career to jump into the top 15, you know, he's been in the top 15 before he's, he's fought a lot of the tough, 
tough guys. He's beaten a couple guys in the top 10. So uh, I think it's a perfect fight for me right now. And it's just uh, the beginning, I think. I agree. It's going to be great. Um, this fight is a few weeks away. Uh, has the weight cut process already started, even though you're at 170 now? No, I, process doesn't start till fight week for me now. So it's kind of nice where I'm more just now trying to keep my weight. You know, I just eat as much as I want, drink as much as I want. I'm trying to just keep on the weight. And that's always going to be the trouble at, at 70 is just staying at, you know, I'm trying to stick around 185. So ideally I get in the cage around 185. So and it's tough, you know, because when training so hard, I have to eat more, and, and but I get lean. I'm going to get lean. I'll probably be like 182, you know, 180 going into fight week, and, and I'll stick there and, and pull off the last 10 before the fight and ideally get in there 82 and feeling great. Who's going to be in your corner for this fight? I'm actually going to have uh, Brock is always going to be in the corner. Larson, Brock. nice. And then I'm going to have uh, Anderson. Uh, he's the new coach that came down with Barboza. So he's the new Muay Thai coach, and I think uh, – I'm going to have him just because I, I think that Ryan LaFleur throws a lot of kicks. So I know he'll see the holes right away when, when Ryan starts kicking. And, and so we've been working, you know, two, three times. But I'm also working with Steve Mako down here all the time with the wrestling. I still have Mikey Rod where I'm working my boxing. I, honestly, I've been – I feel like I've made so many leaps this this camp in my wrestling that it, 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 it's going to be freaky out there. I, I'm kind of excited to get in there and just see really the progressions that I've made. Uh and like I said, Ryan LaFleur, he's tough. I don't care what anyone says about him. You know, this is uh, – Sean Shelby said this is – we're most two born fighters in the UFC, so that's why they're having us take this fight. So he pretty much loser is done. You know, the loser's not going to fight again. And so this is my chance to be like, listen, I, I'm for real. You know, I, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try to dominate him in, in every area. I'm going to try to finish him at every chance I can get. And, and I truly believe that I'm one of the best fighters in the world. I just this is going to be a big opportunity for me to to showcase that. So when Sean Shelby tells you this, are you surprised to hear that he thinks you're the most boring fight? I mean that, that that's got to light a fire under your ass to hear something like that. No, I think it's kind of funny because I I just feel like he he's never really given me the respect that I've I, I feel like I've earned. You know, I think I feel like he kind of looks at my first four fights in the UFC and he saw this just one very one dimensional fighter. You know, I think that. When I first came in, I was very one-dimensional. And you go back and look at my last five fights, I feel like there's a few that were a little – everyone's trying to take me down now. You know, I came in, I was trying to take everyone down. Now everyone's trying to take me down. But they they still treat me like I'm just this boring grappler or something where I'm trying to strike with these guys. I'm trying to take them out. And, you know, I feel like they've been putting me in matchups where everyone's trying to take me down, um, which is interesting, you know, a, a different. But it's let me showcase, let me build in areas that – Maybe I was weaker early on in my career. I, I, I truly think that I'm, I'm a top five welterweight right now. I, I really think that on any given day I could beat anyone. Uh, and, and you can ask my, my trainers, my, my teammates and everything, and people are, like, shocked at, like, where, I, where I'm at where when they see me. You know, even Dustin Poirier the other day is like, man, your striking has come ridiculous. He's like, I, we, we only knew you because I was down there four years ago. Only knew you as just a grappler. Like, you had zero striking. He's like, now – you don't know, like, what are you going to do? Like, you got to decide, do you, do you really want to strike with this guy? or And then you also got to decide, do you really want to grapple with him? So it's kind of that one where I think my skill set's coming so far, and I just I have to go out there and earn it. You know, I just got to earn their respect, and I really don't give a shit what Sean Shelby thinks. I really don't care what Dana thinks. I don't care what any one of them think. You know, all I, I need to go out there and prove it to the world, though, that I'm for real, and I got to go earn my respect. And this is, like I said, this is a great card to do it on a great opponent to do it against. And really now it's just in my hands. You know, it, they can think whatever they want. I have to, I still got to go out there and handle my business. Last question before we let you go. Obviously, if anyone follows your Instagram stories, uh, you and your girlfriend, Kayla Harrison, going back and forth. I got to know, has the tables turned at all? Is, is there any card games she's winning? I mean, she's looking great in the cage, but it seems like in the card games, the miniature um, golf, I, all that other stuff, doesn't seem uh, like the, the tides are well, turning. You might you might want to ask about that clean sweep. <laughs> you might want to ask about so that this clean, is true story. clean sweep. Hey, just like a pause for a second. No, don't tell any stories. I'm gonna tell you a story. No, no stories. Ask him who won Uno last night, three in a row. Have you ever played Monopoly in your whole life and someone tore the whole board up and everything? She destroyed the board. I didn't just. My coach it, just I bought me the Game of Thrones about. Monopoly. This Ask is not about just, the last game we played. She ripped it up and threw who it in the trash. Who won the last game we played? Oh my, who won Uno gift. last night? It's a gift. Who Why won would you rip that up? Who won Uno last night? Answer the question. This is a lucky. reporter. He wants to know. We, yeah, we need we need some answers here, Tony. We got to get an update here. Who, who did win? Who won Uno last night? This is true facts. 
I'm probably at an eighty percent win streak on her. Eighty percent is my my number against her. So she wins twenty percent of the time. I win eighty percent of the time. You're so full of shit. She ripped up my my gift from you know, my coach. So she's like, you, oh, I'll go buy you another one. That, that was sentimental value to me. I get that. And she absolutely like, destroyed it. This is for the public, so he needs to have that like alpha mentality. I understand. <laughs> Between us, no. I won Uno last night. Three in a she row. She did win Uno. She Three has sweet. she has a horseshoe in her rear end did, right now. Yep. So, you can cut everything else out. Just keep that part where no. she did win Uno. Just keep that part in there. She all of it's going to be in. All of it's going to be in. She ripped <laughs> the Monopoly board. I did not rip the Monopoly James, board. who rips I up? don't know what you're Is it still about? out there? I'll go grab it right now. No. no. Oh, okay. All right, well, either way, we got we got a big fight coming up here. It's UFC 229. It's taking place October 6th. Uh, Tony, I appreciate the time as always, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. Yeah, no, thanks again, man. I always appreciate talking with you and, and respect what you do for all the fighters and all the hard work and hours you put in. So, obviously, I appreciate that. And I see you hustling always at the events now and, you know, always getting time in for me and, and all these other fighters. So, I appreciate that. But, no, I, you can follow me at T Martin MMA. That's all my handles on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. You know, uh, and then, like you said, you know, tune in. I think that it's going to be. Another another underlooked fight for uh, me and Ryan LaFleur. I think that, you know, it's an interesting matchup in both of our, you know, we're both high-level grapplers, but I think my striking is a little better, so I'm going to come out and try to put on dominant performance and, and try to, you know, put my name out there for, you know, the biggest card probably ever in the UFC, so I'm excited. What's up, fight fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.